So welcome to part two of putting a new banister and handrail in. Part one, we put in the actual handrail and we put in the base plate and we took away all the old one. This part two, uh, we're going to put in the spindles. So how to fit those, how to cut the angles and that kind of thing. So let's get started. Now the next step is to figure out how many slats we need. Now first things first is if I draw this for you, we take stairs like that. What I want, and here's the slats, what I want to know is what this distance here is between the slats. Not this distance, that's different, you see? The square on the hypotenuse is greater than the, some of the sides. So it's not that distance, it's this distance because they're all vertical and it's that distance I need. So what I need to do is measure that distance and in my case it comes out as one two five four millimeters and then I need to figure out how many slats are going to fit into that. There's an equation for it um, and you can work the equation out yourself or you can just nick the one I've got here but n where n is the number of slats that I need is actually the gap and I'm calling this measurement here the gap minus x and x is this distance here between the slats okay divided by 40 now my slats are 40 mil across change the 40 to 30 if you've got 30s or, or whatever number it is so there's 40 mil plus the gap again so if I put the numbers in that I've got one two five four and uh, 40 mil for those I get something like 8.9 as the answer so I can choose um, I can choose 9 or I can choose 8 now the X here the gap between the two what you want is about 90 mil um, much bigger than that and you, there's too much of a gap and you can start to get things like uh, children putting their head through there is a building rig on it which I think is about 100 mil I could be wrong um, so 90 mil is generally accepted sort of good place to be uh, you can't get a baby's head through that and that's that's what you need so I can either choose eight or nine if I rearrange this equation to figure out what the gap is it becomes gap that's the, the big gap minus 40 times n where n is the number of slats divided by n plus one and that is x the distance between the slats if I put my numbers into there, so I've got one, two, five, four for my gap. N, I'm gonna use nine, put those numbers in. What I get is actually something like 89.4 millimeters, pretty good. Now, if it's not anywhere near 90, you can try adding a slat or taking a slat away and putting it back through this equation here again um, to figure out what you've got. But 89.4, now that's, remember that is this gap here, it's not this gap here. So the next thing I've done here is I've created, I've taken a little bit of scrap and I've cut it to exactly the right size, that 89.4. So I can use that as a measure against all the slats when I put them in. So now we're just about ready to start cutting the slats. When I say slats, I think the official name is spindle, slat, spindle, all the same. Um, so I want to cut these now. Again, I've taken an angle from the stairs and I've checked the top and the bottom to make sure they're the same. So this is on the on the on the bottom one and what we're going to do is apply that to these i'm going to cut all of the spindles with the right angle and then all i need to do is cut them to length and i'll be good to go so anyway, there's the first one now before you cut the other eight or the other however many you've got check that in the stairs put it in the stairs check that the angle is correct you don't want to chop all of them and then discover you've done them all wrong so now i've checked that that's correct i can do the other eight and i'm good to go so the next step we've cut the angles and we need to put to find the length of the actual spindles with a bit of luck they'll all be the same and for that you can use one of these so two pieces of wood okay you can see i've cut a groove down the middle put some box through so the whole thing slides in and out point on the end doesn't need to be a specific angle just a point and then what happens is you can put it in here the right way around so the point touches the square bit fits in at the top and you can then adjust this 
until you get the right length. And the one thing we're going to do, so I've got this thing that I cut of the exact length that I need earlier on. I can slide that down and I can check that it's the same at the top and at the bottom. So in this case, it's pretty close. So I know that that's correct. You can put a spirit level on and check that it's vertical, but that's really quite hard to do to get it, to get it absolutely perfect. Um, and if it's far out, then it'll show up. If this thing, if this mule post isn't absolutely vertical and you put this vertical, you'll see a difference and it won't look right. So it's better to get this first one parallel with the, with the mule post. And then as we work upwards, if the top mule post is, is out of whack as well, we can slowly change it until it reaches that, but generally vertical um, and fit it in. So there's the length that I need. So that's all measured. Um, and then I will cut the first of the spindles to this length. Well, actually I'll cut it another sort of five or six mil long, and then I can try it and make sure that it fits properly. Measure twice, cut once. So here's the first try. Cut it slightly long, so let's see what's happening. So get the bit of wood that I that I cut to length. That's in place. And that's slightly too long, which is what I'd expect because I've cut it slightly long just to be on the safe side. So I'll trim a little bit more off that and I'll keep going until I get this absolutely perfect. Okay, so here we go. It's the final cut. Again, a bit of wood in there. That's right, and that's right, so it's tight all the way down. So that's just what I need. So that's the right length. So the next thing I'm going to do <coughs> is I'm going to try this all the way up. I'm going to get a spirit level. I'm going to check this all the way up, and that will tell me if that gap is staying the same all the way. If it is, I can just cut a load of posts this length, which is hopefully what I'm going to do. If it's not, then I'm going to have to cut them all slightly over length and match them all exactly as I go, um, which is a little bit more work, but worth doing if you want to get it right. So we're at the top here now, and the same post, and I'm trying a bit of wood, and it's pretty close. It is slightly, slightly tighter at the top, but it's not significant enough to show anything, so that's good. Pretty much all the way down, this is good to go. So we're in the middle, checking it in the middle, and you check it against the spirit hole just to make sure, because um, the thing can bow a little bit in the middle, and then you'll pick that up. Um, but this one seems good, so we're ready to go with the next stage. So I can cut now all of the spindles to this length. Um, but before I do that, I've got to start thinking about the little fillets. Okay, now down at the bottom, I put the, the uh, spindle in place and I've wedged it with a piece of wood, the piece of measuring wood that I used. The next thing is to put the fillets in and you'll notice that I've got an angle at one end. Now that angle is the same angle as we've got in here. So but you only need an angle at one end. If you look at this top one, as I bring this in, and if I put it up slightly, you'll be able to see that this angle the top will touch when I, when I put it in, which means I don't need to cut an angle at that end. The other end, however, if I use a flat, it's gonna go like that, and I am gonna get a gap. So what I need to do is have an angle at that end and a flat at this end. Cutting it flat will just make it a lot easier. So I measure it here, make a pencil mark and cut it long again, and then I'll whittle that down bit by bit until it's a perfect fit. So now I've got this first one cut, fits perfectly. And what I'm gonna do next is a, a little double check. So I'm gonna put this in place and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk it all the way up. So let's put that in place there. And then what I'm gonna do is take this, and put it there, hold it, release this, I'm holding this as tight as I can at the bottom here, so it doesn't move. I'm going to walk that all the way up and make sure it does actually fit. Make sure I haven't got any of these calculations wrong. If I get to the top and I've only got a tiny bit left, I'll know it's wrong. If I get to the top and I'm within about a centimetre of where I need to be, then I think that's pretty good because you won't get this absolutely accurate. But it's a good way of just double checking you've got the space of light rather than cutting them all, building it and realising you've got it wrong. So here we are, I've walked it all the way up to the top and the final piece 
you can see I'm short by about half a centimetre maybe. Now, I'll double check that, I'll walk it back up again. And there's 10 posts, so that half a centimetre I need to cut, I need to add about a tenth of that to each one of these. Um, so I'm going to recut this, but ever so slightly, maybe, maybe half a millimetre longer. And I'll do it again, and we should be much closer. Uh, we're pretty close as it is, but um, just that one. Okay, so I've cut the wood very, very slightly longer, only sort of a, a, a millimetre, and you can see that this time it's too long. So, but that's okay. It's only too long by about a couple of mil, and that's better than having it too short. If it's too long, I can now just chop a bit off there and it'll fit. If it's too short, I'm left with the gap, which is much is not good. But basically, I know that this works, so I can now cut 11 of these to, the, to the exactly the same length as this, so I can set up a block on my saw and I can then just chop off 11 of those, I'm good to go. And likewise, because I know these, these fit, I could do the same, set up a block on my saw and just chop them all to exactly the same length and we're good to go. As I said, if you find they don't all completely fit, some are at different angles, then you're going to have to cut them individually, cut them slightly longer, and then trim them down and down until they fit vertically. So here we are, dry fitted all of these now in place, and they fit all the way up. And then the last one is just cut slightly shorter, but as you can see, it doesn't really show. So the next step is gluing all these in place. I glued the first one in place here, the first little spacer, and then it's a case of gluing top and bottom and then if it's not sitting properly if it's not sitting against the top what you can do is just get a bit of tape and tape around it to hold it in place of course it should sit right if you've cut the angles properly so um, don't worry about the underneath ones so these bits underneath we'll do those later on uh, in fact I'm going to paint it first and that way I can have I can paint the white that I'm going to put on here much more easily without worrying about getting it on there and then I'll simply put these in place and it'll cover up any paint spill that I've, that I've got. One of the things that can happen is when you're putting it together the one the next one can slide a little bit and this will pop up and you won't notice. If you're gluing them and you end up with this popped up a little bit they'll all be wrong. So make sure that they're fully down. You might even want to consider putting some tape over there to hold it down so that it doesn't slip up. So here we are, coming to the last one now. Now I'm using this tight bond glue. It's an aliphatic wood glue um, and the benefit of this stuff is that it sets um, hard so that you can sand it. If you use conventional PVA type wood glue it sets soft and you can't. Um, but either will do well. And the trick is to get glue on this end and to get glue on this end without dripping it on the carpet. So be very careful with this. You get a decent amount of glue on there. It doesn't need too much because essentially these are going to be held in place by these infills at the top and bottom. But the glue just keeps it all secure, it stops it from rattling around. There's one, and then very quickly the second one before it drips. Put the glue down. I'll put it in at the bottom first. And as I do it, I'm holding this down, pushing that into place, and then I'm putting the top in. Um, if you don't hold this down, as I said, it's liable to pop up. If you press down on these, what can happen is that a load of them could concertina all up and you have to reset them all again. So be aware of that. So there we go. All I need to do is put the last one of these in, and that's done ready for painting. So now I've put a coat of undercoat on, and that will show up any lumps and bumps and gaps and holes, so I can go around with a bit of trusty filler, fill all those little holes and then go over it with some, something like 100, 120 grit sandpaper and then some finer stuff and then it'll be a couple of more coats of undercoat and coat of gloss and the painting will be done. So now all the spindles are in place, things are in place so final job just to put the inner fills in. Now it's the same thing as the ones we did at the bottom, you've got a slopey edge and a flat edge and what happens with these is it will just fit in here so again you cut them slightly long and then trim them and eventually you should find that it fits in and clips in it should be nice and firm and fit perfectly in there now because of this 
this one has a hole here where the, the access is to the bolts that hold the thing on. Now, I don't want to cover that up completely in case you ever need to tighten it up again. So, what I'm going to do, the bolt hole is here at this end. So what I'm going to do is just put glue at one end of it, but not, not where the bolt is. So, that way, there's only glue at one end, it'll hold it in place. If I ever need to get it off, I can just stick a screw in there and it'll just break that glue because of the lever on there. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do to the first one. And the rest, just, just glue in. And what you will need to do is put a clamp on to hold it in place while the glue dries. Otherwise, you think, oh, that's almost stuck and you'll do three and then they'll all fall out. So, clamp's on. So, as you can see, the last of the underneath bits are just, just being glued in now. There's the clamps on. One final job is to put the end caps on. Now, I've got these sort of flat end caps in oak, so I don't want to screw through them. So what I'm going to do is just glue them on. They're nice and flat. They pretty much fit. So it's just a case of gluing it on and leaving it. I tend to put a fair amount of glue on it because people tend to come down the stairs and swing around on it. I don't want them balling off. So if you've got one that you're intending to paint, then it's easy enough to put a nail or a screw through. Or if you've got one of those with the, the nodule on top, sometimes you might have to cut a hole in here so that the, the dangly bit fits. Otherwise, that's done. Bit of glue on there. And that will be job done. So a top tip for you, while you're varnishing your end caps, if you put three screws in the bottom, not only can you hold the screws while you varnish it, but also the three screws will form like little table legs and it will stand up to dry. So then you can leave it somewhere out of the way to dry without getting finger marks all over it. So that's it, job done. Um, hopefully that was useful. Um, it's not a difficult job to do, but you do have to be very painstaking about getting the getting the lengths exactly right so everything fits together and the angles are correct. The more time you put in, the more you'll get out of it. So hopefully that was useful. If you liked it, feel free to subscribe and I might see you next time.